So let's see that uh, in an example. So I'm gonna right click the tab up top and let's just imagine we're at a cash register now. So in your mind, we're at a cash register. And so I'm gonna say, let's let's pick up, let's pretend this one was cash receipts uh, of, of this 1,000. Uh, 37805 so I'm gonna go okay let's go to the first tab and I'm gonna hit the plus button and we're gonna go into a sales receipt sales receipt situation let's say this is customer customer number what are we on let's just say 10 customer 10 I skipped a few and so we're gonna go boom customer 10 BAM and let's say this happens on Let's say uh, 10, 15, 22 is where my numbers are at. And then down here, I'm gonna say that we have, it looks just like an invoice, but now it's a sales receipt, right? So I'm gonna say, let's just say we had hours and I'm just gonna try to match it out to here, which is the 137805. So I'm gonna say, okay, 1378.05. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna imagine this one I deposit directly into the checking account. This is not the way I think you're gonna be able to do it most of the time, because notice if this was like a cash sale again or a credit card sale, then th th this dollar amount isn't necessarily what's actually gonna hit the checking account because I'm gonna to group together multiple sales possibly or the credit card company will when I actually deposit them physically into my bank. So I won't be able to, to basically connect. So, so that means my bank's gonna have a different grouping. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to show the two methods that you could use though, however. So if you've got, for example, electronic transfers, then maybe you could do it this way because that means it's gonna hit the bank for this exact dollar amount. But if it's cash or credit card, you might have to use the undeposited funds. So let's just imagine like the easy way first, this is gonna be an increase to the sales driven by the item down here and an increase to the uh, checking account driven by uh, this item. Let's go ahead and save and close it. Save and close. And then if I go back to the balance sheet tab and we run it, running, and I go into the cash, now it increased the checking account. So if I go into the checking account with a sales receipt, that's the other thing that be a little bit, uh, you might wanna think about a little bit. It's not a big deal that you have an increase to the checking account with a sales receipt. But when you think about the increases to the checking account, notice we have multiple things here. Now we've got the sales receipts, the deposit and the payment forms. So if I wanted to sort, for example, up top for the increases to this account, I'd have to say filter, transaction type i'd have to pick up three things there might be a payment form there might be a deposits that increase it of course and now we've got the sales receipt that could increase it so if i do that that's a little bit more tricky just for the filtering to kind of pick up those different kind of things that could all be increases to the checking account which you would not have if you used the clearing account method but that's not a big deal just something to kind of be aware of and then I'm going to go back on over and the other side is going to go into the revenue account on the other side of things, running it. We're in the service revenue, boom, service revenue, services. And then we've got our sales receipt, sales receipt going into it. And that looks good. And because you're using the actual sales receipt uh, and you're adding an item, you do have the sub ledger reports now because now you're using a full service type of system. So if I ran for, for example, subsidiary reports now, if I right click on this and duplicate it, and I've said, I want to run a report that's going to give me my sales by customer or my sales by item, what I sold, I can go to the reports on the left hand side. And let's just say sales, sales by customer. So let's just do the summary sales by customer from, I'm going to go from 010122 to 123122, run it. And so there we have that. So now we've got our sales broken out by who we made the sales to. And it adds up to that 294305. Uh, so notice our total sales are this 9,002. It's not tying out to total sales, 
because most of these sales I made using a deposit form. Remember all these sales I used made it making a deposit form, which isn't what QuickBooks is kind of designed to do. That means you lose some of that detail. But this one, for example, most of these are in place with an invoice or sales receipts, the forms QuickBooks is designed to use. And therefore you have this subsidiary report. So if all your sales were made with invoices and sales receipts and you assigned a customer, which you pretty much have to do if you're using those forms, this report would basically tie out. Let's, let's open another one just to see the sales by item. So that's why usually on the income statement, you wouldn't break out all of your income lines by customer like we did kind of here, unless you're doing like gig work or something like that. So let's go on over here and look at sales sales by product service. Let's do that one and go from 010122 to 123122. Run it, running. So now we've got the actual things that we sold, which once again, ties out to the 22943 here. Only the items where we actually used invoices uh, and sales receipts are being picked up here. If you used, if you only recorded revenue with the forms designed to do so, invoices and sales receipts, and you assigned an item, inventory or service item, the thing you sold, this would tie out to basically uh, your total income over here. And therefore you would only want, usually your idea would be only to have a couple income line items, and then all the detail would be broken out in the subs subsidiary reports, unless you're recording with deposits. Okay, let's go to the first tab. Uh, or the second tab and say, how do the bank feeds <clears throat> fit into this? If I refresh this, it might pick this one up. Now the dates are wrong because I, this date is actually before the one that I put in place. Uh, so, but let's try it. Let's refresh it. Actually, I, did I do the Google or did I do Skillshare? I can't even remember. Get your head in the game. This is serious. Crying out loud. I think I did this one. It's still the dates before, so it might not pick it up. I might have to change the date, but I'm going to go into it and see if I can match it. And so there's the invoice. So the invoice is actually, I think I tied it out to the 1378, this one. So let's try this one. And that one's way before. So let's see if I can match that one. And it doesn't give me anything to match it to. Oh, let's change the date up here and bring it up to the end of October. That's when I entered, there it is. Okay, so there's the sales receipt. Now, obviously you probably wouldn't have this big difference in the dates, so it would find it. If this sales receipt was closer in date, I made the sales receipt actually after the deposit, which is why QuickBooks wouldn't have picked it up, you would think by, by default. If this was put in there before, the date that deposit happened, the correct time frame, then you would think QuickBooks might pick it up. And let's just test that out just for the fun of it. If I go back on over here and I say, let's say this happened, let's just change the date on it to 8-1 and see if QuickBooks, this date, sale rate, don't mix. Okay, sales date is gonna be, okay, let's do that. I'm gonna save it and close it. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up horribly and then i'm going to go back here i'm going to close this out and i'm going to refresh the screen refresh the screen with a refresh button and see if quickbooks picks that up because it's basically a deposit now so yeah so now it matched it so now it found it so so there you go so it should kind of do that because you the sales receipt is kind of like a deposit form now when i match this when i actually hit match it's not going to do anything it's not going to record anything new because the deposit had already been made, although it wasn't made with a deposit form, it was made with the sales receipt. So I'll match that out and boom, that's one method that can, that, uh, that can be used.